Welcome to IITJ Advanced Physics Problem Solving Session. In this session, we are going to solve problems from modern physics and the topic will be confined to photoelectric effect and Bohr's atomic model. Let us start solving some problems. Let us begin solving some problems from modern physics. In this first problem that we are going to do, uh, it is said, in a historical experiment to determine Planck's constant, the metal surface was irradiated with light of different wavelengths. The emitted photoelectron energies were measured by applying a stopping potential. The relevant data for the wavelength of incident light and the corresponding stopping potential, corresponding stopping potential are given below. The wavelength is given in micrometer and the potential is given in volt. You are given the speed of light as 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and electron charge as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. So you have to find out the Planck constant from such an experiment. Let us solve this problem. This question was asked in 2016 advanced AE. So before you do the problem, just you have to keep in mind that data that is given to you are speed of light, the electron charge, and you are given certain information about a tabulated data of wavelength lambda and the stopping potential V0. Now you know, you have studied in the photoelectric effect chapter that uh, when a photon is getting incident on a metal surface, it has energy H nu, which I can also write as Sc by lambda. And if this energy is sufficient to uh, surpass the work function of the metal, say phi, then if this energy is greater than phi, then the if for electrons will be ejected uh, from the metal surface with some kinetic energy and uh, basically that maximum kinetic energy is also given as this uh, in it can be written expressed in terms of this stopping potential v0 so this is the formula that has to be utilized that has to be applied in this particular problem now uh, if I write this formula in this format, say V0 is equal to SC by E 1 by lambda phi my, by E, I can see or we can see that uh, this is of the form of Y is equal to MX plus C where, you know, C is this basically constant don't get confused with the symbol c uh, this is the equation of a straight line welcome if to I IT take advanced my physics problem solving session in this session we are going to solve problems from modern physics and why the topic is will be confined to photoelectric effect zero and, and it Bohr's is very atomic easy model. to see let us start solving some the problems graph would be something of this sort okay this is the point where it would be minus phi by e okay now let us utilize this formula so one thing you can see that the slope slope is given by slope of the curve would be sc by e so clearly, if we can uh, calculate the slope, then we'll be able to find out the Planck constant as well because C and E are given to us. So from geometry, you know that I can write my slope as uh, here the slope is m uh, by m I mean to say slope, okay? By m I mean to say slope, okay? M sc by lambda 
sorry it's not sc what is slope sc by e okay sc by e and from coordinate geometry i know that i can write my m as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 and that is i have sc by e now from the table uh, from the table we see if i just pick up uh, this two set of data then i can write y2 that is the potential part right this is your this is let me actually utilize this data part and just utilize it here oh. all right going on uh, okay so what i can do i can write this v0 to 1 so y2 let me take 1 here and y1 as 2 okay that corresponding uh, x2 and x1 which is basically 1 by lambda for 2 it is 0.3 and uh, for 1 it is 0.4 so for so i have here it's as 1 by 0.3 1 by 0.4 okay and then you have sc by e and then you can actually calculate it this would be simply if i do it do the maths this is your 1 okay this is your 10 by 4 minus 10 by 3 sc by e which can be written as 12 by 10 sc by e and therefore h is equal to 1.2 e by c but remember that uh, your lambda is given in terms of micrometer so you have to bring that part it is 10 to the power minus six factor have to be added there uh, it has to be it has to be multiplied by that because this uh, this is one by lambda that is in micrometer one by micrometer one by micrometer here so it will go up so therefore a micrometer it would be in terms of micrometer and that i have to take it to meter so that is why it is 10 to the power minus six i hope you have got it so it would be 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 6 into e is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and this is 3 into 10 to the power 8 so if you do the maths then you are going to get it as 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second so the correct option would be 6.4 b so option correct option is b all right so correct option is correct option in this particular problem is b okay now let us do this problem a metal surface is illuminated by light of two different wavelengths 248 nanometer and 310 nanometer the maximum speeds of the photo electrons corresponding to these wavelengths are e1 and e2 respectively if the ratio e1 is to e u2 is 2 is to 1 and sc is hc is equal to 1 2 4 0 electron volt nanometer the work function of the metal is nearly so basically in in this 2014 je problem you are asked to find out the work function of the metal okay uh, here uh, again 
this is a problem from photoelectric effect so here you have sc by lambda because i have to write it in this format because wavelengths are given sc by lambda is equal to work function okay work function of the metal plus the maximum kinetic energy now uh, corresponding to the wavelength say 248 nanometer the kinetic energy is say half okay i can write uh, for this two information 248 nanometer and 310 nanometer like this so i can write say half m u1 square is equal to sc by lambda 1 minus phi it is going to be the same because i am just uh, different wavelengths are getting incident on the same metal so work function is the property of the metal it is not going to change it's going to remain the same for both the cases so in the other case half m u2 square is equal to sc by lambda 2 minus 5 okay this actually i can write uh, because sc is given to be 1 to 40 electron volt nanometer so let me put here and lambda 1 is 248 nanometer lambda 2 is 310 nanometer so utilizing this information okay let me write that this implies that i can write half m e1 square is equal to uh, 1 to 4 0 divided by first one was 248 nanometer okay then this is phi so this is now in electron volt then it is electron volt nanometer electron volt nanometer it was so it's basically getting uh, it's nanometer so it's get cancelled out so everything is now in electron volt okay and the other one is going to give you half uh, m u2 square is equal to 1 to 4 0 by 3 10 3 10 minus 5 in fact you can further simplify it if you can easily see that this is basically 5 minus 5 and this is this it is 4 minus 5 now if you let me take it as equation number one and equation number two if i take the ratio of these two equations i have e1 square by u2 square is equal to five minus phi divided by four minus five and e1 u2 is uh, ratio of e1 u2 is two so this is going to give me simply four and then i have if i take this side if just this manipulation of the equation if i do then i will left out with uh, okay you can solve it very easily this is 16 minus 4 5 minus 5 minus 5 so so this is going to give me 3 pi by uh, 11 and then that means phi 11 by 3 if i do it then this will be 3.667 uh, electron volt who is i can approximately write it as 3.7 electron volt so if you now look at the option yeah option a would be the correct answer for this particular problem now let us go to the next one okay in this problem light of wavelength uh, lambda ph okay light of wavelength uh, lambda ph falls on a cathode surface a cathode plate inside a vacuum uh, tube as shown in the figure so this is your um, cathode cathode the work function of the cathode surface is phi and the anode is a wire mesh conducting so this is your anode 
please you can read it yourself uh, a knot is a wire mesh of conducting material kept at a distance d from the cathode a potential difference v is maintained between the electrodes if the minimum de Broglie wavelength of the electron passing through the anode is lambda e which of the following statement is true or are true so there may be more than one correct option so options are lambda e that is basically the de Broglie wavelength of the electron lambda e decreases with increase in phi that means the work function of the cathode and lambda ps that is the incident uh, wavelength of the photon lambda is approximately half if d is double d is the bit, uh, distance between the cathode and the anode for large potential difference lambda e, lambda e de Broglie wavelength of the electron is approximately half if v is made, of, made four times and the fourth option is lambda e decreases at the same rate as lambda ps for lambda ps less than sc by phi okay let us do this problem uh, here uh, a incident light which is sc by lambda ph i think here ph refers to the photon when this photon is getting incident on the cathode then of course this first of all it has to encounter the work function and then uh, electrons will get emitted that is the maximum kinetic energy term and let me refer it to as cathode i am talking about the cathode now so this is what now what is happening that these ejected electrons these ejected electrons from the cathode is ejected electrons are accelerated accelerated uh, from the cathode to the anode right from the cathode to the anode uh, by a potential v by a potential by a potential v so uh, the kinetic energy of the electron that is getting reaching the anode i can write it like this it is the initially the kinetic energy at the cathode was this much and then when it has propagated uh, then it is basically in between it is given this additional energy ev okay now again you see uh, from this particular formula here i can express this thing cathode i can express this as hc by lambda ph minus phi and this guy is ev now this is the kinetic energy of the electron in the anode and i know uh, that de Broglie wavelength of the electron is h by p and which is basically i can write it as twice i think this formula you know it's simple to understand that is your kinetic energy at the anode at the anode okay this is the de Broglie wavelength of the electron reaching the anode so then i can write then i can write lambda e is equal to h divided by twice m sc by lambda ph minus phi plus e v okay i have to put the square root as well so this is what i have now let us analyze it because why i have derived it because i know that ultimately i need to know just by looking at the option you see everything is about the relation between lambda e lambda ph work function and things like that so i have to that's why i have to 
ex get an expression to do this problem i have to get an expression for uh, de broglie wavelength of the electron lambda e at the anode so that's what we have uh, i have done now let us analyze uh, analyze it option by option first option was okay it says that lambda e decreases with increase in phi and lambda ph okay let us see what happens if uh, lambda ph and phi is increased phi is increased what's going to happen if lambda ph is getting increased then uh, okay um, your uh, this particular term will decrease so therefore ultimately it will increase so lambda e it, it implies if lambda ph increases it implies uh, it implies that lambda e increases again if i look at the phi increase in phi okay it is again decreasing the whole denominator thing so okay that means if if, if phi is increased then also lambda e increases but the option says that lambda e decreases with increase in phi and lambda p so option a is not correct so option a as per our analysis option a not correct okay it's an option a not correct now coming to the uh, second uh, thing okay lambda is approximately half is these double that is also not correct because in the expression for lambda e there is no dependency on d right so therefore automatically i can rule out option b option b not correct option b not correct fine then what about option uh, third option for large potential difference when v is much much greater than phi by e okay here you see generally what is going to happen that this particular term and this term is almost the same in magnitude so if that's the case for v is uh, very very large for v very very large than larger than phi by e i can approximately write my lambda e is almost equal to h divided by twice m e v under root now you see now if i double my potential if uh, oh no four times the potential if i make it okay as per the question then lambda e is automatically obviously it would become half of this thing so therefore uh, this option c is correct okay lambda is approximately half if v is made four times so option c is correct what about the last option lambda e increases at the same rate as lambda p is for lambda p is less than this now this is interesting because it says that both uh, as lambda p is in, in increases lambda is also increases and that is basically kind of linear relationship but this is here if you see this expression that uh, the relation between lambda ps okay let me write here lambda ps the relation between lambda ps and lambda ph and lambda e lambda e are actually non-linear okay there there is not a linear relationship between lambda e and lambda p s so this implies that option that that means lambda e does not vary uh, along with lambda p s so this implies option d is also not correct so option d is not correct is not correct so this can be ruled out so therefore only option that we are left out is the option c so option c is the correct one so in this particular problem only one option is correct and that is option c now come to this part uh, this problem problem number four here 
uh, for photo this is also related to photoelectric effect and uh, it says that for photoelectric effect uh, with incident photon wavelength lambda the stopping potential is v0 identify the correct variation of v0 with lambda and 1 by lambda this already we know what happens with 1 by lambda because we have done it already in other problems this was asked in 2015 je again here the question is that sc by lambda is equal to you know this work function plus e v0 this is what you have to utilize it this equation you can write it as v0 is equal to s uh, you have uh, um, sc by e and then 1 by lambda okay and then you can write it as minus phi by e so this is what you write here and then what you can you can easily see that this first one if i just take v0 as my y-axis and v0 at y and 1 by lambda as my x then i am going to get a relation uh, i can get a, a straight line of this type and who is in indeed this is basically option c is the correct one okay but what about the other one what about uh, when you say you have lambda as your x-axis and v0 is your y-axis then it is better to write this expression in this form so let me write it like this so you have ev0 uh, from this relation i can have ev0 plus phi lambda okay this i can write uh, lambda uh, lambda is equal to sc all right so if you look at this then you can see now first of all you see what's going to happen at say v0 is equal to zero so in this x-axis x-axis when v0 is zero so you have uh, your lambda would be uh, from this equation you see uh, v0 is equal to zero implies lambda is equal to sc by phi so it would have some value so somewhere here let us say okay this particular point is sc by phi and another point you see what's going to happen if lambda is equal to zero if lambda is equal to zero uh, you see what's going to happen at this particular point uh, then v0 you see from here v0 would tend to infinity so v0 will blow up so therefore you are going to get a plot of this type okay approximately because lambda v0 is anyway it's going to be constant so therefore you will get a plot like this so if you look at the option here then which one is correct obviously option a is similar to the plot so here the correct options are a and c okay now let us uh, do this problem number five here uh, this was asked in 2018 in a photoelectric experiment a parallel beam of monochromatic light with power of 200 watt is incident 200 watt is incident on a perfectly absorbing uh, absorbing cathode of work function 6.25 electron volt the frequency of light is just above the threshold frequency so that the photoelectrons are emitted with negligible kinetic energy assume that the photoelectron emission efficiency is 100 percent a potential difference of 500 volt is applied between the cathode and anode all right all the emitted electrons are incident normally uh, on the anode and are absorbed the anode experiment experiences a force f is equal to n into 10 to the power minus 4 newton due to impact of the electrons the value of n is okay this is basically integer type question and you are asked to uh, work out what is the force and then you have to find out n okay let us do it all the information that is given is your mass of the electron is given 
and one electron volt is you have to write it in terms of zoom will be 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 zoom all right so let us do it first of all uh, you see power is given let me okay so for, let us calculate what is the the number of electrons first of all you see uh, that is emitted by the cathode per unit time <coughs> okay that is what we can easily work out number of number of electrons electrons uh, emitted number of electrons emitted per unit time per unit time it is say let me say number of electrons d and dt number of electrons per unit time or n by t also you can write doesn't matter so that is your power divided by the energy that's a work function of the metal work function okay and these are given to you power is given to be 200 watt right 200 watt and work function is given as to be 6.25 electron volt 6.25 electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule so okay this we'll need later on now uh, what about uh, force how you have to calculate the force Calcu what is force force is the uh, rate of change the momentum basically transferred uh, part in it time right that is what the force is so clearly i need to know the momentum to uh, momentum of the electrons so momentum of the electrons at p is equal to mv but before that i need to know velocity okay it's easy because i know that the maximum kinetic energy is half mv square uh, from here i can work it out and uh, uh, what is given maximum kinetic energy is the potential you see the potential the, you have to just find out the stopping potential the potential difference of 500 volt is applied 500 volts so that is this in terms of energy it would be e into v e into v and therefore uh, your v would be equal to twice into ev okay you don't get confused with this so let me use this symbol v0 and then i have it as m then under under root i have to okay and uh, if i do the maths then the velocity uh, would be 2 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and v is 500 and okay m you know okay 9.1 into that's what you have to utilize 9 point n not uh, just 9 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram that's what you have to use so v you know so therefore you know the momentum so momentum transport is you know so that is due to uh, p is equal to mv is only due to only one electron so because number of electrons so therefore the total force would be the total number of electrons the force would be due to the total momentum getting transferred so that would be uh, number of electrons that is you know uh, we have calculated it per unit time and the corresponding momentum okay that's the formula now we have uh above actually here we have worked out everything uh, if i just put down put the numbers here 200 here okay let me just copy this part here all right let me do this and let me just put it here okay okay let me put it here and let me take it out fine so this already we have okay this i have now 
uh, and momentum i think you can do it yourself you do the uh, momentum also p is equal to m v okay m into v m into v v already you have worked out okay sorry i you can do it yourself okay we, this uh, you just have to put then if you just put down all the numbers there then finally let me give you the answer what you are going to get the final answer that you should get is 24 into 10 to the power after doing all the algebra it's a you just have to use a little bit of lengthy calculation this is what you will get so uh, therefore your number because you are it's given in terms of n into 10 to the power minus 4 newton so 4 newton so your n the integer is 2.4 sorry 24 24 is the answer in fact 24.00 also you can say that because it's clearly 24 if you work it out all right so this is what the solution of this particular problem is okay let us proceed further in this problem number six the work this is was asked in 2013 j the work function of functions of silver and sodium are 4.6 and 2.3 electron volt respectively and uh, the ratio of slope of the stopping potential versus frequency plot for silver to that of sodium is okay how to do it now here you are asking you see now potent stopping potential versus frequency not wavelength so again go to the basic the formula is photon energy dismas work function and then e into v okay let me say v zero so if i stopping potential versus frequency so let me write v zero is equal to h by e nu minus phi by e so here the slope is obviously h by e now because the slope is a constant it's a trivial problem a universal constant actually because h is a universal constant e is also the universal constant therefore the ratio of the slope of the st uh, stopping potential uh, versus frequency plot for silver or for that matter any uh, metal you take is always going to be the ratio would be one so ratio would turn out to be slope ratio slope ratio would be equal to one all right so here you are asked to give the number okay here that means the number the numerical answer is uh, integer it's one so that's the answer okay now let us this uh, solve this problem this is what this was asked in 2012 j a proton is fired from very far away a proton is fired from very far away towards a nucleus of charge capital q is equal to 120 e where e is the electronic charge it makes a closest approach of 10 femtometer to the nucleus the de Broglie wavelength in the unit of fm is basically femtometer in the unit of femtometer of the proton at at its start okay at its start is what so that is what is asked and then you are given the proton mass is given h by e is given all these things are given to you so you have to work it out so let us solve this problem this seems to be an interesting one uh, let us say uh, initially let us say initially say uh, kinet initial kinetic energy is ki and initial potential energy is ui so these are your initial kinetic energy kinetic energy and potential energy 
and let's say kf uf are the final final kinetic energy and potential energy okay now initially what is happening at a very far away distance at a at a at a far away distance at a far away distance that means when say far away distance from the nucleus say r tends to infinity then you know that the potential energy is of the of the form of one by r so here because r tends to infinity so potential energy i can take it to be zero what is going to happen at the as it approaches at the closest approach at the closest approach at the closest approach okay at the it makes a closest approach of 10 femtometer at the closest approach the proton the proton actually what happens is it comes to rest momentarily so i am actually taking my final observation point to be at the closest approach what's going to happen there the proton comes to rest momentarily so therefore the kinetic energy of the proton would be equal to zero and what about the potential energy potential energy is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, charge of the nucleus is q into e right q into q into q uh, q charge of the nucleus is capital q that is 120 e and charge of the proton is e so that would be 102 e into e so e square and divided by uh, closest this approach distance so let me say a a is um, distance of closest approach that is what i am taking as a distance of closest approach all right so this is the formula that i have now now clearly the total energy is conserved so ki plus ui is equal to k plus uf so because my ui is equal to zero so i have ki is equal to uf and who is we have got it to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 120e square by a okay now you are asked you remember in this particular problem you are asked to find out the de Broglie wavelength of the proton at its start so ki you know the information of ki the de Broglie wavelength lambda i is equal to h by pi right initial momentum of the proton and which i can write in terms of kinetic energy as twice m ki okay now i know what is my ki and if i just uh, use this particular formula that we had here ki i can express so i would have h by uh, e okay you have to be careful here and then you will get 4 pi epsilon 0 a divided by 240 into m okay here also i will ask you urge you to put the values here 4 pi every uh, everything is given in the problem if you put 1 by 4 pi epsilon not all these things are given to you you can do the calculations yourself it's very easy and if you do it then you should get the answer as 7 femtometer 7 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter which is 7 femtometer so the answer is here in the fill in the blanks kind of here the numerical integer value actually this is 7 whatever it is it is 7 femtometer okay so now let us do this uh, problem from i think this is now from atomic physics 
Bohr model in fact uh, the wavelength of the first fractal line in the Bummer series of hydrogen atom is 6561 angstrom the wavelength of the second spectral line in the Bummer series of singly ionized helium atom is so this is what you have to find out wavelength of the second spectral line in the Bummer series for helium atom singly singly ionized helium atom okay let us do it before we do it let me remind you what is the Bummer series is you know that the wavelength of the spectral line when an electron in a singly ionized atom say say we have a singly singly ionized atom with atomic number with say atomic number atomic number z okay the wavelength for uh, this formula i think all of you know <coughs> that when the transition is taking from say m to n okay let me first write it r z square 1 by n square minus 1 by m square this formula all of you know that this is basically when transition is taking place from m to n ms to nth orbit where m is greater than n okay so this is the uh, wavelength the formula for the wavelength so now what is bummer series now if i talk about bummer series in bummer series first line first line correspond to m is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2 basically the final line is n is equal to 2 that's what you have to re remember second line refers to m is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2 okay this is the last line now two things are there one is information for the hydrogen atom is given and its wavelength is given for hydrogen for hydrogen you have z is equal to 1 and wavelength was given as 6561 angstrom so this formula let me apply r is Rydberg constant r z square z is 1 so i have 1 by first line so it is uh, 2 is going from basically right 3 to 2 so this is what i have and if you do it you are going to get 5 r divided by 36 this is what let me say this is my one and for helium singly ionized helium okay for singly ionized helium i have z is equal to 2 and then 1 by lambda so it is z is equal to 2 r z square so it's 4 r and then you have you are talking about the second line here right 2 square and you are starting with m is equal to 4 so 4 square this is what and if you do it then it would be 3 r by 4 so this is your second now you let us divide 1 by 2 if you do it then you will immediately get that your lambda lambda is equal to 1 to 1 5 angstrom now if you look at the options there then correct option is a 1 to 1 5 angstrom all right this is what this is how you have to do it okay now this is 2016 and again it's a problem from atomic uh, structures let me read it highly excited state for hydrogen like atoms also called Rydberg state with nuclear charge 
zedi uh, are defined by their principal quantum number n where uh, n is much much greater than 1 the principal quantum number is basically in rydberg atom it's a very very important atom in atomic physics and in particular in modern physics context it's extremely important where the principal quantum number is extremely high which of the following states is or are true so four options are given one is relative change in the radii of two consecutive orbitals does not depend on z <coughs> this is your sorry this is your option number a again relative change in radius two consecutive okay then relative change in energy relative change in angular momentum so basically you need to focus on three things now radii uh, energy and angular momentum okay angular momentum what if what about the relative change in this it's a simple problem first of all let me focus on the radii because i know the nth radius is given as say n square a0 by z where a0 is the so-called bore radius right i think all of you know a0 is called the bore radius and uh, its value is you know it's around 0 0.53 angstrom okay let us find out the relative change in the radius when we say relative change in radius of consecutive orbitals so so what you are going to have is r n plus one minus r n this is i mean by relative change in radius simple problem so if you just apply this formula here okay you will get okay let me just do it n plus one whole square a zero by z minus n square a zero by z and then you have n square a zero by z so if you do it then you will get 2 n plus 1 divided by n square right now you see because n is much much greater than 1 so I can in, write the relative change in the radius radii as because n is much much greater than this this simply I can write as 2 by n okay now what about the options here by the way relative change in the radii of two consecutive orbital does not depend on z yeah this is correct because it just depends on the principal quantum number n there is no z dependence is there relative change in the radius of two consecutive varies as 1 by n right that is actually also correct because we found that this is 2 by n so yeah variation is of the order 1 by n so option both option a and b are correct now let us check what about option c and d c is about the energy so c is about the energy you know that the energy in it uh, for these atoms would be simply 13.6 z square by n square okay so therefore the relative change in energy it would be e n plus one minus e n by e n if you do it i am leaving it to you you are going to get it as minus two by n so the variation is again four when n is much much greater than one so variation is of the order of one by n now what about it here it says relative change in energy of two consecutive orbital varies as one by n cube not it's not correct it's uh, it is one by n right it's so option c is not correct what about uh, angular momentum thing now angular momentum angular momentum uh, you know that the nth energy level has the nth state has the angular momentum is the poor quantization rule n h by 
integral multiple of h cross or h by 2 pi so relative change again relative change of the angular momentum would be simply this if you work it out you will get it to be 1 by n so what the option says the option says the relative change in angular momentum of two consecutive orbital varies as 1 by n yeah it's correct so you see that option a option b and option d are correct so here three options are correct a b and d okay now this is uh, another problem uh, based on the Bohr model so here the radius uh, of orbit of an electron in an hydrogen like atom is 4.5 a0 where a0 is the Bohr radius uh, its orbital angular momentum is 3 h pi uh, 2 pi it is given that H is Planck, R is Planck constant and R is Rydberg constant. The possible wavelengths, okay, when the atom D excites R. Okay, let us do it. Uh, you know already from the previous problem that uh, angular momentum is given by N uh, H by 2 pi. And now here in this particular problem, it is given to be 3 H pi. So here it implies that from the in this given problem n is equal to 3 this is clear now uh, first of all then what we have another information okay radius is given you know the radius of the orbit again you know it is n square by z z a 0 now radius is given to be 4.5 into Bohr radius right n is 3 so it is 9 so this is simply 9 by z a 0 okay it's simple so you can immediately see your z is equal to 2 right so you have found out z <laughs> right then what are the possible wavelengths when the atom d excites? Because you have two informations you have now. n is equal to 3 and z is equal to 2. Alright. So, because n is equal to 3, uh, that is the highest principal quantum number in this. So, what are the possible wavelengths when it d excites? Possible wavelengths when atom d excites okay first of all let us see what are the possibilities n is equal to 3 and then it's bore good uh, model so n is equal to 1 and n would be somewhere here okay so these are the what are the possible wavelengths or oh, possibility are there so n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2 is one possibility let me name it as lambda 1 from n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 1 is another possibility so let me say it is lambda 2 and you have uh, another one yeah this is what you have so n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1 so let us say this is lambda 3 okay these are the possibilities so now let us do it one by one the for for the first one uh, you have say 1 by lambda 1 is equal to uh, z is equal to 2 so therefore you have 4 r right you have 4 r and it's 1 by 9 minus 1 by 4 okay so this is going to give you 4 r into 5 by 36 okay so therefore you have lambda 1 is equal to 9 divided by 5 r similarly i leave it to you then you can immediately show it's easy to show that lambda 2 would turn out to be 9 by 32 r and lambda 3 would turn out to be uh, 1 by 3 r 
now if you these are the three possible wavelengths one should get now if you look at the options the possible wavelengths when the atom d excites are 9 by 32 r yes this is what we got in one of the option and this one so option a and c option a and option c right is it correct no 9 by 32 r we got and uh, 9 by 5 r yeah sorry we got these two these two are they are in the option so therefore option a and c are what we are the correct options okay let us solve this one this is uh, again related to both this was asked in 2017 mm -hmm. An electron in a hydrogen atom undergoes a transition from an orbit with quantum number Ni to another with quantum number Nf. Vi and Vf are respectively the initial and final potential energies of the electron. If the ratio is given to be 6.25, then the smallest possible Nf is what? Okay, now here in this problem, your En is equal to minus 13.6 n square electron volt, right? This is well known. Now, potential energy of the nth state is given as En by 2. It's a trivial, okay. Now, utilizing this, what about the ith state? Suppose the ith state is Vi, for the ith state Vi, you have 13.6 twice Ni square electron volt. And similarly for the uh, state with quantum number Nf, you have Vf is equal to minus 13.6 twice Nf square electron volt. Now, if I take the ratio, this implies that Vi by Vf is equal to, let's say, Nf square divided by Ni square. And in fact, the ratio of Vi by Vf is, is given, yeah, it is given to be 6.25. 6.25 so from here i can immediately write that nf by ni is equal to 2.5 or i conclude that nf is equal to 2.5 into ni but you see nf and ni are principal quantum numbers so they are integers okay positive integers therefore the the smallest the smallest possible smallest possible integral value <coughs> integral value are nf and ni ni can be equal to 2 and nf would be then 5 so you are asked to find out the smallest possible value of nf so obviously it's five so answer is five let me solve this last problem for this class a hydrogen atom in its ground state is irradiated by light of wavelength 970 angstrom taking hc is equal to 1.3 237 into 10 to the power minus 6 electron volt meter and the ground state energy of hydrogen atom is 13.6 electron volt the number of lines present in the emission spectrum okay <coughs> so here what is happening is that when a 
photon or light is basically incident on it on the atom so its energy is a sc by lambda that is wavelength is given so you can calculate the what is the energy that is basically uh, hitting the atom the energy you can calculate it hc is given it's 1.237 into 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, it is in meter electron volt meter so lambda is 970 angstrom so let me express it in terms of meter 10 to the power minus 10 meter okay if i do the calculation so if you do the calculation you are going to get the answer as uh, here you will get it as 12.75 electron volt okay this is basically the energy that is uh, incident on the uh, atom due to the irradiation of light now say this incident light uh, excites the hydrogen atom from its ground state n is equal to 1 to uh, some uh, some quantum some state some state say n okay so having principal quantum number so that means say en suppose it is getting excited there it is going from the ground state by taking the energy that is getting incident on the atom so en is equal to minus 13.6 by n square and ground state energy is n is equal to 1 there and it is minus 13.6 everything is in electron volt so you need not have to bother about the units here everything is same here so you get this equation now if you solve this equation then you are going to get n is equal to 4 okay so that means the atom was initially in the ground state and then it may get excited to all these possibilities are there it uh, it is getting uh, what you are asked to do is to find out the number of lines okay so it is getting up to n is equal to 4 then you have okay these are the energy levels you have now what are the possible lines okay let us do one by one one is say n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 3 is possible n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 2 is possible again n is equal to 4 to n is equal to 1 is also possible and then uh, n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 2 is possible n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 1 is possible and then you have am i have i missed something yes then you have possibility is yeah n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 1 so total uh, six lines are possible six lines are possible okay six lines are possible so the number of lines number of lines in the emission spectrum is six okay let me stop here so that's for today i hope uh, you like the problems and uh, i hope you will be able to solve uh, problems related to photoelectric effect and atomic model after attending uh, this particular lecture. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.